Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. When shopping for your family's meals, do you know where you can find Alaska-grown products? Everywhere. They're available at your local grocery stores and farmer's markets across the state. Alaska-grown products are fresher and more nutritious, and buying local helps grow our economy. So just look for the Alaska-grown label when you shop, or ask your grocer where the Alaska-grown products are. Remember, Alaska-grown. It's closer, fresher, better. And it's all Alaska-grown. The National Weather Service. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 30th of June, the end of the month. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information and weather conditions are going to be changing from the top of Denali all the way down to Suicide Basin in southeastern Alaska and many points in between, of course. The weather info line is one way to get that information at 800-472-0391. You can find information about uh, the changing weather in southeast or in south central or in the north slope at NWS Alaska. So if you haven't followed us there on Facebook, make sure you go out there and do that. And there's another little trick to make sure you're getting the most important information from the Weather Service if you're looking at it from Facebook. You can use a little drop down on the right side and say, show me this first. There's a little toggle on there. You just say, yep, yeah, that's what I want. And every time you open Facebook, you'll always see our latest and greatest information. Uh, from NWS Alaska on Facebook. On Twitter, you can find us at NWS Alaska, NWS Anchorage, NWS Juno, NWS Fairbanks. And we all like to use one common hashtag, that is that pound sign, and then AKWX. It's short for Alaska Weather. And when you use that, no matter if you follow us or don't, it lets us know that you're talking about Alaska Weather, and we say, hey, you know what? Uh, Eskimo Fixer up in Shishmaref is talking about the weather up there around Kotzebue Sound and Shish. We want to watch that and see what he's saying. So folks like that, use AKWX and let us know uh, what's going on and uh, certainly help round out our weather picture from our various offices around Alaska. On YouTube, of course, you get your daily afternoon map briefing that shows up usually around 4 o'clock on YouTube, so make sure you check that out if you haven't lately. And if you haven't heard by now, because we've been talking about it for at least the last couple of weeks, we do have some new websites or some changes coming to the websites you use all the time. On July 6th, that's the magic day that's going to happen. And if you want to check out what's coming before it actually becomes the official website, get a sneak peek at w2.weather.gov and you can use slash AFC, slash AFG, or slash AJK. That'll take you to the preview for those new websites there. Dig around, see if you can find your forecast, make it work, and if it doesn't, we'd really like to know because on July 6th, we'd like to have those changes fixed so that your weather continues to be your weather from weather.gov. Here's a look at what's going on around Alaska now. After all of that, in southeastern Alaska, the Mendenhall River is under a flood warning. It looks like it's going to last at least until 8.15 on Saturday unless conditions improve. And why would the Mendenhall River be flooding right now? A glacial dam lake. We're going to show you some pictures from that here in just a few minutes, but let's jump ahead into fire danger quickly before we get there. You can see a broad area of high fire danger across the upper Yukon, the upper Tanana, around the Copper River Basin, South Central, the Matanuska River, and the Anchorage uh, Valley. That's probably going to change after we get some rainfall. And the Kobuk and No Attack Valleys also looking at generally high fire danger and even some areas on the North Slope and some extreme fire danger as you get into the middle Yukon Valley and the Koyukuk River Valley, also around Bristol Bay. Now, many of these areas are going to get some rainfall opportunities here in the next several days, so fire danger will be changing. The flip side of that is a lot of that rainfall will be coming with the possibility of thunder and lightning. So hopefully that's balanced out and we don't have too many fire starts. But uh, again, conditions are growing a little bit more than they were the last couple days for high fire danger there. Now, as promised, a look at the Glacial Dam Lake. Uh, this is a suicide basin. This is up on the glacial area there uh, above uh, where you like to walk around at the Mendenhall Visitor Center there in Juneau. And this is what we're talking about. Uh, a pack of ice holds back some meltwater in the glacier 
and when that is topped or when that glacial dam releases, the water that's been held back lets go. And if that all comes down at once or in very quick order, uh, that can present some pretty uh, nasty flood problems there. 2014 would be one of those higher water level marks there that the folks around the Mendenhall River Valley remember. And that looks like that could be possible again with uh, this suicide basin release. So let's watch. I'll show you what it looks like over the course of, uh, I think, the last day or so. This is a, a picture every hour, and there's about six or seven of them here. But you can actually see that filling up fairly quickly uh, during the day. And we think now this is releasing, and a flood warning is in effect as a result of that. Uh, so that's kind of what it looks like there. Very quick rises as that dam is holding the water back and then as that releases, of course, uh, things can change very quickly. So remember, if you start to see some trouble spots around your area, let folks know. Let the National Weather Service know up there in Juneau and uh, that's very helpful information to the hydrologists and the weather forecasters as well. Here is a look at uh, the Gulf of Alaska and we still have our persistent low there in the middle of the Gulf of Alaska. And now though, it has grabbed a bunch of moisture is moving that northward, moving that into the outer coast of southeast Alaska, south of Sitka and Ketchikan and Annette. Should be a, a good slug of rain moving up the outer coast. We'll see how far north that gets, but it should expand the coverage of wet weather across southeast coming into the next few days. On top of that, a little bit further north, a broad area of moisture moving out of Canada and wrapping into southwestern Alaska. This is where that rainfall chance is coming in and it has been picking up as it's moved across the border and will start to move its way into the Matanuska Valley and as well as the Talkeetnas through the remainder of the evening, uh, also into the Anchorage Bowl. A lot of that's going to come in a little bit later tonight and we've seen a, quite a bit of thunder and lightning across a good part of the lower to middle Yukon Valley as well as the Kuskokwim Valley and certainly the upper Tanana and upper Yukon Valleys. And a lot of what you're seeing here across Canada is certainly thunderstorm activity, as well as what we're looking at here north of the Yukon Valley towards the south facing slopes of the Brooks Range. Out across the west, the dying frontal boundary here across uh, the uh, central bearing uh, being held back by high pressure. That's still in charge, but the low pressure circulation here is weakening and weakening and that front is all but gone. So here's a look at the surface chart. Here's the low pressure system working just offshore of Haida Gwaii at 1004 millibars. That's working northward. Uh, saw a lightning strike or two around the Yakutat area today, so uh, that can happen. And widely scattered rain and thunder across uh, the interior, south central that is developing and out across the Yukon. It is coming from east to west. High pressure sitting across the Arctic Ocean at 1,025 millibars, locking in low clouds and stratus. Don't be surprised if you continue to see fog along the coastal areas. High pressures west of St. Lawrence Island at 1,021 millibars, and there's our very weak area of low pressure way out west at 1,000 millibars. The frontal boundary there again falling apart with some showers and drizzle generally north of Adak and Atka. Tonight, it looks like rain and thunder will settle into more parts of south central, southwest, and the interior. A 1,007 millibar circulation sitting close to Eagle there with low pressure working up the outer coast of southeastern Alaska at 1,003 millibars. We'll see a wealth of rain, the highest amounts probably uh, from the northern parts of the Susitna Valley into the Alaska Range and further north. It looks like over the next two days, some of the highest amounts of rainfall possible could approach two inches or so, and most of that will be over the mountains. So a lot of that uh, not necessarily right over Anchorage or the Kenai River. However, if you're going out this weekend and you do have fishing plans, whether that's in southeast or southwest or south central Alaska or the interior, be mindful of where you are and the weather that is upstream from you. Uh, the water levels can change in the river where you are, and make sure you know how you're going to get out of there in case conditions change with the flow or the weather or both in short order there. Uh, bad things happen when you're not aware of your surroundings and paying attention to the weather in situations like this. High pressure sitting outside of the Gulf of Anadir right now at 1019 millibars. That's giving a gentle and drier flow coming down through the Bering Strait. A little bit of fog underneath that as well and pockets of rain and drizzle will be expected across the central Aleutians. Some of that kind of grazing into Dutch Harbor and on Alaska as we go through the weekend. High pressure out west doesn't move too much and neither does the rain as we go through Friday. It looks like a chance for showers and thunderstorms there as you're uh, perhaps making your early escape uh, for your holiday weekend or perhaps uh, sheltering in place with uh, rain and thunder possible across southwest or the interior tomorrow. 
Uh, looks like some of that will reach its way down into Kodiak Island. And you'll notice the rainfall across southeast is still being nudged a little bit further and further north there, now past Glacier Bay and into Yakutat at 1,004 millibars there. The trough of low pressure will sit uh, just to the west of Haida Gwaii. So nothing too unusual for you, just a return to rainfall for southeastern Alaska. Here's a look at Saturday and colder air is trying to drop southward across the Chukchi coast uh, with that colder air moving in. Another round of clouds is coming. Don't be surprised to see some light rain or drizzle with that. Fog out ahead of it as a ridge of high pressure still in control all the way from the Beaufort Sea coast through the Bering Strait. And widely scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue around the Alaska Range and on the north and south sides of that for south central. And showers may occasionally be heavy around places like Kodiak Island. And for southeastern Alaska, low pressure shifts a little bit further south toward the Dixon entrance. That could still keep some wet weather moving in from the south and southeast, but drier weather will start to move in a little bit further behind it as we get into the rest of the weekend. And showers continue for many across the Aleutians. Here's a look at temperatures today. For southeast, we saw many areas back in the lower to mid-60s for Ketchikan, Petersburg, uh, Hyder was at 61, uh, looked like 55 around uh, Sitka and Goon was a little bit on the uh, cooler side than yesterday, I think. And uh, mid to upper 60s for Haines and Skagway. Capital City temps were in the upper 50s late day. Mid 50s around Prince William Sound, Cordova 56, 60 around Whittier, 57 in uh, Seward, 61 in Homer. Kenai saw just shy of 60 degrees late day, 68 around Anchorage, warmer still around Talkeetna, Wasilla, and Palmer. Lower 70s for Fairbanks, 59 in Eagle, thanks to some of the rain clouds moving in. at 62 down around Northway. Looking further northward, we saw some cooler weather moving in under the clouds. Their temps were only in the 50s, but once you got out of the clouds, 70s and 80s around, I believe that's Birch Creek, 72 around Anaktuvik Pass, 40 in Barrow, though, on the cooler side of all of that. That low, cool air uh, made its way into Kaktovik again at 41. Wainwright, just down the coast, saw temps near 60 degrees, 40s and 50s for Kotzebue Sound. In uh, Shishmaref, uh, 54 there at Dennis's Place, 56 around Nome, 60s and 70s around Norton Sound. Galena was a mild 76. 72 in McGrath, lower 70s for Bethel today. Around most of the uh, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta region, we saw 60s along the outer coast. Most areas probably nosed up on that 70 degree mark. 50s for St. Lawrence Island. Bristol Bay temperatures for King Sam and Dillingham, uh, Lake Iliamna, oh, this entire region in the upper 60s. Uh, around the Alaska Peninsula, most of the region was in the upper 50s. A few spots like uh, Cold Bay, I believe, in the lower 60s. 52 for Dutch Harbor and Alaska, 54 for St. Paul. Adak and Atka, both in the upper 40s. Same goes for Shemya and Kodiak, 55. Overnight low temperatures will stay in the mid to upper 50s for most of the lowlands. Look at all that heat holding on. 61 in Fort Yukon, south central in the lower to mid 50s, southeast in the upper 40s and low 50s. The chain in the Alaska Peninsula, a cooler night in the upper 40s, 53 for Nunavak Island, 46 around Gamble, and 36 in Nome. High temperatures tomorrow will be back in the 70s and 80s for many across the Kobuk and Noatak and Koyukuk Valleys all the way into the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta regions. For South Central and the Copper River Basin, noticeably cooler thanks to clouds and rainy weather, 50s and low 60s perhaps. Southeast, upper 50s and lower 60s for many. Uh, the Alaska Peninsula generally in the lower 60s, Sandpoint about 63, Kodiak 57, Bethel near 76, Nome 71, and Barrow 56 degrees. Now, as we head on into flying weather, look for IFR conditions across the northwest coast into Kotzebue Sound and across the central and western coast, IFR conditions of the Aleutians and uh, IFR conditions around Prince William Sound and northward thanks to the rain. And this is just the morning. As we get into the afternoon, you'll see a better chance for showers and thunderstorms across the western Alaska range. MVFR conditions may linger around some of your favorite passes, so keep that in mind for your early start and dismissal. And MVFR conditions across the uh, southern parts of the uh, panhandle there. IFR conditions out west and continue across the Chukchi coast and the Beaufort coast. In the meantime, though, Anaktuvik and Attigan Pass look to be okay. VFR conditions tomorrow, Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, we expect to see MVFR conditions through most of the day. A chance for convection and rainy pass, also looking at MVFR. Windy Pass, we expect marginal conditions throughout a good part of the day. Isabel Pass may lean over toward IFR as the day goes on. With showers and thunderstorms in the region, some of that rain could be heavy. Mentasta Pass, VFR conditions may improve and develop as we go through the day. Still watching for convection as the afternoon goes on. Tanita Pass, MVFR. VFR conditions probably improving in the afternoon. Still watching for rain and thunder around the Talkeetness and Portage Pass, at least starting at IFR, but maybe some improvements as the day goes on. 
Chilkoot and White Pass, we also expect to see VFR through a good chunk of the day, but remember, MVFR if you're heading down to the southern end of the panhandle. Freezing levels show that cold air aloft is sitting right across the Gulf of Alaska, and the warm air aloft is still holding out across the interior. Levels there at or even above 10,000 feet. Wouldn't be surprised to see some small hail from some of the thunderstorms that we're seeing out there across the interior tonight. Icing potential shows us there's enough moisture above 10,000 feet that you could run into some light isolated moderate all the way from the Cook Inlet up the uh, Susitna Valley and into and over the Alaska Range and into Bristol Bay uh, from 8,000 feet around the southern regions to about 10,000 feet and higher up north. Above 8,000 feet for the northern third of southeastern Alaska and above 9,000 feet out across the western bearing. Here's a look at the jet stream and once again this is the conveyor belt of weather coming out of eastern Asia keeping a lot of that activity just south of Alaska. However, we do have the influence from that easterly flow. That's what's bringing in that unsettled pattern from western Canada and moving that through the Alaska Range in south central and eventually southwestern Alaska. On the northern side of that, we're still getting those daily outbreaks of thunderstorms across the interior. So that upper level flow absolutely drives those showers and thunderstorms every single day. If you know which way the wind's coming at this level, you can pretty much guess which way those thunderstorms are going to travel during the day. At 9,000 feet, you can see that gentle northerly flow here at 10 to 25 knots across the interior and southwesterly is across the Arctic Ocean and high pressure sitting across St. Lawrence Island, gently guiding winds across the bearing at about 10 to 20 knots. At 3,000 feet, we have a south and westerly flow coming into the panhandle between 20 and 30 offshore and 10 to 20 over land. Gentle north and easterly winds coming down the west coast of Alaska, about 10 to 20 knots on the western side of the Alaska Range, and southwesterlies continue along the Chukchi Sea coast around 10 to 20 knots with low pressure across the western chain. What about turbulence? It should be pretty limited tomorrow. We'll have some isolated chop around the Dixon entrance below 4,000 feet and Bristol Bay about the same. Watch for thunderstorms to develop, and again, poor visibility may not be your friend tomorrow. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back with the rest of your marine weather here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Jupiter is ready for his close-up. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. The long wait is almost over. Ooh, is it time for another conjunction? No, not yet, but soon. Don't worry, don't worry. What I'm talking about is the planet Jupiter. Uh-huh. Is at long last getting a new visitor? Oh, yeah. The Juno spacecraft will be arriving at Jupiter on July 4th. I know. After almost five years in space, Juno will finally reach its destination and hopefully bring us some amazing close-up pictures of the giant planet. Why don't we take you there and show you the sights? Sounds good. Let's take you on a special tour of Jupiter. Okay. It's July 4th and we're facing west at 10.30 p.m. There's Jupiter, that really bright star looking thing. Even though the Earth is moving away from Jupiter, it's still the brightest object in the nighttime sky, other than the moon. It looks like a bright, steady, cream-colored star. It was a lot closer to us in March and looked a lot brighter, but now it's almost 540 million miles away. Still, we can see it easily and behold its beautiful light. So now we're going to cross those 540 million miles and take you in for a closer look at the giant planet and its many moons. Faster than the speed of light, we're approaching Jupiter. There, now you can see most of its 67 known moons looking like little fireflies circling the planet. Imagine if we had 67 moons in our sky. As we get closer, we start to see the planet itself and its telltale stripes, which parallel the lines of latitude on Jupiter. And coming around the side is the Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is a humongous cyclone of gases that well up from the inside and churn the outer surface of the planet. It has been there for at least 140 years, though many other spots have popped up from time to time. Right now, the Great Red Spot is about the size of two Earths, although it has been shrinking lately. If this continues, the red spot may be tough to see, turn pale in color, or disappear altogether. But Dean, don't get too close. You'll get sucked in. Ah! Well, that was fun. 
<laughs> Good thing we have force fields on our skyboards. <laughs> anyway, let's visit each of Jupiter's four largest moons. Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. These are worlds all their own and have some pretty cool features to explore. Callisto is the farthest of the four from Jupiter and takes almost 17 days to circle its planet. It's a large moon with a ton of craters. One called Valhalla shows where an impacting asteroid liquefied the rock and left ripples stretching over 2,000 miles. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. It's even bigger than Mercury. So if it didn't circle Jupiter, it could be a planet. Next is Europa, the ice-covered world. The surface cracks tell us a story because below the icy shell lies an ocean of liquid water. How much water? Hopefully the Juno spacecraft can tell us more this year. And maybe in the distant future, we can drill through the ice and see what might be swimming in the ocean below. And then there's Io. Sheesh, this moon looks a little ugly up close and it smells. What you're seeing is volcanoes. Volcanoes and more volcanoes peppering the surface. Io is the most volcanic place in the solar system, and Juno will have a great time mapping all the new mountain ranges and lava flows that formed since the Galileo spacecraft last flew by in 2003. So, on July 4th, celebrate the arrival of the Juno spacecraft to Jupiter. First, look for Jupiter in the western sky after sunset. Then, if you can, look through a backyard telescope to see the planet up close and spy four of its 67 moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Then, tune in to the Juno mission to see what discoveries await 540 million miles from Earth. What a journey when you keep looking, looking up. With warm water moving north of the Bering Strait now and up the Chukchi coast, we continue to see the ice eroding across the Chukchi Sea itself and the water opening up even more from Point Hope to Wainwright. There's still plenty of ice there. Concentrations are uh, above zero here, I guess. I wouldn't say this is completely open. That's what the light blue shade means, and the darker white means, of course, higher concentrations. You can check thickness, movement, forecast, and seasonal outlook anytime you want at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice dot php for the very latest from our sea ice experts right here in Alaska. Here's a look at the forecast now for the marine areas. A south and easterly flow coming up through the Dixon entrance, Clarence Strait, and outside of Craig from the south and east at 25 knots, 5 foot seas on the inside, 8 foot seas on the outside. Southerly is also coming up in Lynn Canal up to 20 knots with the 3 foot sea. Northerly is a little bit further down the inner channels, around 15 knots with the 3 foot sea. Offshore winds blowing out across sound from the north and east, 20 knots with a 7 foot sea. And northwesterly is up around Icy Cape and Cape Fairweather. Around 15 knots with a four foot sea there on Friday. Uh, many areas across the outer coast will start to get into an uh, onshore flow from about 15 to 20 knots, seven to as high as nine foot seas expected there. We'll keep that south and easterly flow and move it up uh, the inner channels a little bit more, about 20 knots or so, looking for four foot seas on the inside for Saturday. Across south central, light winds are expected inside of Prince William Sound across the western gulf at 10 to 15 knots. Southwesterly is on either side of Kodiak Island with five to six foot seas there. But notice that healthy southerly flow moving all the way up from the western barrens up Cook Inlet and all the way to the northern Cook Inlet at 20 to 25 knots tomorrow. A look for seven to as high as eight foot seas there and all of that is pushing very wet air up into the mountains and the Susitna Valley as well as the Anchorage Bowl. So keep that in mind that's helping to drive that wet weather forecast for Saturday. Winds go slack again. Look for a two to four foot sea across many areas. Two foot seas on the inside of Prince William Sound. A southeasterly flow picks up from 15 knots across the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay. Five foot seas there and southwesterlies continue around Kodiak Island. 15 foot seas though on the inside and diminishing around Shelikoff Strait with a six foot sea. Four to five foot seas on the north and western Gulf for Saturday. 
Across the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay, we see a broad westerly flow, 25 knots inside of Bristol Bay with a 5-foot sea down the coast, 3-foot seas. Uh, across the Pacific Coast, 4 to 5 foot seas with 15 to 20 knot winds. For Saturday, the westerlies don't stop, but the winds come up a little bit more, about 20 to 25, 5 to 7 foot seas on the Bering Sea Coast, and 6 to 8 foot seas on the Pacific Coast. And for the Aleutians, uh, south and easterly flow on the south side of the chain with easterlies north of Unalaska and Nikolsky at 15 knots with the 3 foot sea. Light and somewhat variable winds out across Kiska and Attu with a 4 foot sea there as we get into Saturday. A little bit of a southwesterly shift and a change up to 15 knots. Three to five foot seas are expected. Six foot seas on the Pacific coast and light and variable winds north of Unalaska and Nikolsky with generally three foot seas in the region. Across the west coast, north and northwesterlies are expected north of Nunavak Island uh, toward St. Lawrence Island. 15 knots with a three foot sea. Uh, generally light and variable winds around St. Matthew and St. Paul and St. George. Uh, with seas holding around 3 to 5 feet northwesterlies outside of the Kuskokwim Delta. 20 knots from the northwest with a 4-foot sea on Saturday. That becomes a little bit more of a westerly flow. Northwesterlies get in line here from Nunavak Island to St. Matthew and Gamble, uh, St. Lawrence Island. 15 to 20 knots there with a 3 to 4-foot sea and light and variable winds around the Pribilovs with a 2-foot sea there. Now for the north slope, easterlies will be strongest just offshore of Kaktovik uh, with 25 knots and a 6-foot sea there. Southerlies working off of Point Barrow and south and westerlies coming up the Chukchi coast at 15 to 20 knots. Westerlies into Kotzebue Sound becoming northwesterly on Saturday. Also looking for westerly flow around Barrow down toward Point Lay, 15 knots with a 2-foot sea and east and southeasterly winds across the eastern and central Beaufort Sea coast with a 4-foot sea in the open waters. Here's a recap of tonight's weather. Widely scattered showers and thunderstorms are moving in from western Canada. Many of you have seen thunder and lightning across the interior for the last several days. And more is on the way. Heavier rainfall is possible around some of the Alaska range and just south of that. In some cases, it could be up to two inches or so. For south central, periods of rain will pick up as we head into the nighttime hours and may be upon us for a good part of tomorrow. And a wave of wetter weather is moving up through southeastern Alaska with low pressure uh, gradually shifting northward before it drops south again on Saturday. Look for periods of showers across the chain with high pressure sitting up north around the northern Bering Sea. Uh, periods of fog should be expected across the north slope with widely scattered areas of rain and thunder back again for the interior on Saturday. In the meantime, a flood warning continues for the Mendenhall Valley through Saturday. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. From her rich and fertile valleys to the shores of her icy seas, from her fields and farms and shellfish beds and her many nurseries For the finest of her flavor, for the freshest by far Choose the things Alaskans bring to the market where you are Products that we're proud to call our own And it's all Alaska 